Hey now, brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Meanahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at the Kraken expansion for Abyss from Asmodee and Bombix. Now, uh, Abyss was a pretty big smash hit at, I think, was it, did it come out at Essen, I believe, last year, or Gen Con, my, uh, either one of those two, uh, in 2014, and then it just kind of went away. I mean, I don't hear people talking about it all that much in the past year. I personally loved it. It was a very good game for me. It made my top 100 list at the end of last year. Will it make this year's? Stay tuned. It's ongoing right now. I don't want to give any spoilers. Uh, probably. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. One thing people always talk about is look fantastic, amazing artwork. And as you can see, that is still on display in this game as well. And I thought that Abyss, which was a like the sort of um, set collection, but also uh, bidding and all these different uh, disparate elements working together into a really gateway, almost family weight game um, about trying to manipulate the undersea courts of this undersea empire with uh, fish peoples and things like that. Um, I really thought the game would have been fine on its own without ever getting an expansion, but I am certainly glad that uh, they were justified in putting one out. Now, what this is is a modular expansion where there's different gameplay elements that you can choose to play with or not, or throw them all in together. One of them is these like dark pearls called the nebulous, which are really... Uh, you know, the things that you do that earn you those pearls are really powerful effects, but then you're stuck with these dark pearls, which are not a good thing to have. There's another push-your-luck element in trying to find a different treasure and loot from the new loot deck from the different uh, new areas called sanctuaries will provide to you. And there's also new lords that are going to manipulate your nebulous and also potentially lock down cards for you. Let me go ahead and show you all the new stuff, or most of the new stuff, I'll explain that in a minute, that comes in the expansion for uh, the crack an expansion for Abyss. Then we're going to come back. I'll let you know what I think. Okay, let me show you the new stuff that comes in the Abyss Kraken expansion. Uh, the first thing we're going to focus on is the new lords. And now actually the easiest one to explain uh, is that there are two new lords for each of the existing factions from the base game. And they don't really behave very differently than any of the other um, lords from the base game. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> Unless I'm missing something, and my friend is missing something who was helping me uh, do the review plays for this game, it would appear that there's no mark on these cards to indicate that they're part of the expansion. I really don't see anything unless it's something really subtle that I'm just missing. So I can't remember what every one of these uh, new um, lords are for the existing factions, but I do know a few of them. Uh, so I'll show you just a few of them anyways. So first you have the Highwayman. This is from the, uh, the Crab faction. When an opponent gains two or more pearls, you take a pearl from them. Uh, the Inheritor is one of the, uh, the Clam or Oyster factions. You gain five pearls just for uh, acquiring that lord. The Hypnotist is from the Jellyfish faction. During each opponent's turn, you can purchase two allies, which is a very, very interesting power. And then uh, the other one of the Jellyfish faction cards, the Healer. You take the ally of your choice from the discard. She's got It's an immediate ability, so when you take that card. So, okay, that's the easiest thing to explain because those are basically just like the first game. Uh, but now let's talk about, well, let's go ahead and skip the other lords for right now. And let's talk about these new allies that come in the deck, the Kraken allies. And hey, there's a little Kraken token over there too. So you have these new cards that are going to be shuffled into the ally deck. And for the most part, they function, they you know have the same backs and everything like that. And they, they function kind of like wilds, okay? So you can use them as any faction of your choice, hence the reason they have the sort of grayed out bubble there. Um, and you can use them as one of the different factions you need in order to purchase one of the Lord cards. And they all they have their, their differing uh, amounts, like through one through five, just like the other cards do. However, notice that there's this black dot up on the top of the card. That's because every time you choose to use one of these cards, and by the way, these never affiliate like the other cards, so you won't be able to get them at the end for points. But every time you use one of these uh, Kraken cards, you need to take a Nebulous. Now, what's a Nebulous, you might say? Well, that is a new type of pearl that's in the game. The, these metallic pearls, uh, you'll get this little container for them as well. You'll keep them off to the side. No one starts with any of them, but every time that you play one of those Kraken cards, and through other means as well, you're going to have to take a Nebulous. Now, in general, what the Nebulous do, 
at the end of the game, every nebulous that you have in, you'll, you'll put these together with the rest of your pearls. And for every nebulous that you have at the end of the game, you take negative one victory point. Whoever has the most nebulous at any given time during the course of the game takes the Kraken figure here just as a symbol that they are the most corrupt player because nebulous are like corrupt, I guess. Uh, and then at the end of the game, whoever is stuck with that figure because they have the most nebulous now uh, has to take another negative five points on top of however many negative points they have just for having that many nebulous. So you could really get screwed if you take too many of the nebulous tokens. Now, the interesting thing, though, is during the course of the game, you can actually spend your nebulous like pearls with some very strict limitations. You can only spend a nebulous if you are completely out of regular pearls. And even then, you can only spend one nebulous per turn. And even then, you cannot spend the nebulous to do the, um, the going to court action, which is where you can spend a pearl just to refill spots on the court track. Uh, so you can use it to fill, you can use a nebulous to help you um, purchase a lord, and you can use a nebulous to purchase allies, but it has to be your last resort, and you can only use one of them to do that. Well, you might say, well, that's pretty rough. Uh, I mean, it, that must make it really difficult to get rid of nebulous, and it is. Um, and in fact, if you are, if you get stuck with any of the Kraken cards in your hand at the end of the game, um, in your hand of allies, not only do they not affiliate, but you also have to take however many black uh, nebulous are depicted on the card stuck in your hand. So that's pretty nasty. So what else can you do to get around that? Well, that's where these other lords come in. There's a whole new faction of cards called the Smugglers. They look a little bit different. Now they look kind of like Magic Merfolk, but uh, from Magic the Gathering, I mean. All Merfolk are magic. Uh, <laughs> so you're going to summon these uh, the same way that you would summon the sort of neutral faction cards from the, um, the the base game in that you need uh, a faction of your choice or yeah actually all the smugglers only require one faction and it can be of any of your choice um, all of one faction uh, and uh, I'm talking about ally cards to spend but um, what they'll do is they all have some sort of effect regarding nebulous so the fence here says that each one of your nebulous give one of your nebulous to each opponent uh, the cleaner says that at the end of the game, you do not receive any nebulous for the Krakens that you still have in your hands, like I was just describing. Notice that they have keys just like the, the normal lords, some of the normal lords do. The outlaw says that when purchasing something, you can use two nebulous instead of just the one limit. The ferryman says, during your turn, you can discard one nebulous and replace it with one pearl. Uh, and the counterfeiter, when purchasing something, you can use one nebulous even if you still have pearls. So if you can get a hold of the smugglers, that's a very good way to get rid of your nebulous. Now there's one other type of lord, a new lord, that uh, has to do with the uh, nebulous. And I don't know if these are technically considered the smuggler faction, but they are neutral faction. Uh, these are the sentinels. There's three different sentinels, and they each have a token that corresponds to their particular one. So if you have the vigil, this is the token for the vigil. When you take this lord, you're going to take that token, uh, as well as a nebulous. In other words, for taking that, you have to take a nebulous. It's just sort of a penalty you have to face. However, what this token allows you to do is, and uh, what any of the three tokens allow you to do, is essentially reserve a card. You can reserve a card in one of the zones, either the court, you can reserve a lord that's there, one of the stacks of cards in the assembly, uh, or one of the uh, lands tiles, one of the location tiles, which, have, which are some new ones which we'll get to. Um, you basically just say on your turn, I'm, or as soon as you take this token, you're going to slap that token down on one of those things that you want to reserve for yourself. No one else can purchase it. No one else can do anything to it. It's stuck there until you purchase it, and that's that. Now, once you purchase that thing, you can move the token to another thing on your on your next turn. So you can keep locking down an item or a thing or a lord or whatever it is in order for only you to get it. Now, if you happen to get more than one, of, or actually if any player um, has, has gained a sentinel as well as you, uh, then you can only have one sentinel token per area. Meaning that uh, if I put a token on one of the lords and... Either I have another uh, Sentinel token or my opponent has a Sentinel token. That other Sentinel token can't go in the core area. All right, so that's that. So let's talk about the new locations. There's a couple of locations that are just sort of uh, 
not that big a deal, and they have to do with the Nebulous and with the new Smuggler. So you have the Kraken's Lair, which is just, you get 15 points minus 3 for each of your Nebulous. So if your Nebulous free, that could be a pretty good uh, tile for you. Otherwise, not so much. The Gambling then has to do with the Smugglers. You get 2 points for each of your Smuggler Lords plus 5. And then we get into a brand new type of location. There are four locations that have this treasure chest symbol, which by no coincidence has to do with this deck of cards that has a treasure chest symbol on it called the loot deck. These are called sanctuaries. And sanctuaries all work the same way. There's the Cetacean Graveyard, the Megalodon, the Battlefield, and the Abandoned Convoy. Oh, poor, poor turtle. So here's how this works. It's kind of complicated. Not really, but it just stick with me. When you take this location, you, as it says, you gain access to the loot deck. You're going to go over to the loot deck, uh, which will, at the beginning of the game, will not have a discard pile, and you flip over a card. And on that card, it's going to have a number of victory points, and it may, uh, for all but one of the types of cards, have a symbol in the top corner. You will immediately gain whatever that symbol benefit is, and this location uh, this card is going to potentially go on that location as victory points, meaning at the end of the game, this card will be at wor this tile will be worth potentially six victory points. But now you have a little bit of push your luck. You can stop where you are and say, "Okay, I'm done. That's it. I'm just going to stop there. That's what this thing is worth. I'm done." Or you can say, "I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to keep drawing cards from the deck. And for every card that I draw that is different, I'm going to gain the benefit again. Well, I'm going to gain the benefit no matter what." So in this case, two pearls. Uh, but I could say, oh, it's a different number of victory points. So I'm going to take that one as well. So now my stuff is worth 10 points. And I'm going to keep going. And oh, I've busted. You see, as soon as you've drawn a card that matches a card that you've already drawn in victory points, you have busted. You're still going to gain the immediate benefit, but now you have to discard all of the cards that you've gained, which means that your location just became worth bub kiss. Okay, that's the push your luck element here. Sorry, I'm sorry. Let me immediately correct myself. You do not discard every card. But you discard only the matched cards. So in this particular scenario, if I drew a four, or if I, if I drew the six, then I drew a four, then I drew another four, I'd have to get rid of both fours, but I'd get to keep the six. Uh, and Or if I have any other ones, I'd get to keep those as well. Uh, but and, and I get to also keep any rewards that I've gained for any of the cards. But any matching cards go away. So you might still potentially have the Sanctuary be worth something. If you're really unlucky, though, if the first two cards you draw match up, you get nothing for it other than those listed rewards. So let's go ahead and go, uh, show you what the rewards are for each of the types of cards. First off, there are victory points numbered from 3 to 7. And there, the number of cards is equal to the number. So there's three threes, four fours, and so on. So uh, first up for the threes, they are keys. So for every one of them that you have, it's a key, which means you might, if you get three of them with whatever other keys you have, you'll be able to take a location. The fours give you two pearls. Very simple. Uh, if the five is going to let you uh, draw one of the monster tokens, the victory point tokens from the monster deck, uh, the six is going to let you um, draw from the ally deck. If it's an ally, you immediately take it, put it into your hand. If it's a monster, you just move the monster track up one and then discard the monster card. Uh, and then the seven is, has no other special ability. It's just worth seven points, which is a lot of points. But there's seven of them in the deck, so your odds of drawing a second one to pair up is slightly or uh, much higher. And uh, that's it. That's everything that comes, except for some of the generic lords. I just couldn't figure out which was which. Uh, but yes, that's everything basically that comes in the Kraken expansion for Abyss. Let's get to my final thoughts. So there are two uh, main types of expansions. Well, maybe there's more main types of expansions, but the two I can think of right now are the types of expansions that just, uh, they expand the game by just adding more. More of the same. If it's a deck building game, Here's some more cards. If it's, you know, e even like uh, a game like Elder's Horror, here's some more cards that you put in several different decks. <laughs> Things like that. But it doesn't, even if it uh, gives you, like in the case of Elder's Horror, it gives you like some new great old ones that you have to fight, it doesn't change the game in any kind of fundamental way. But then you have modular expansions. Modular expansions for a lot of different games, especially for Euro games, which I would thinly throw Abyss into as a category. Um, 
these experiences are efforts or um, opportunities for the designers and publishers to experiment and try different things and see how you can sort of break the existing rules of the original system. And as such, a lot of modular expansions I've played have been sort of a grab bag of some things that are really good, some things okay, some things not so much. And that is kind of where I'm going to fall with uh, the Kraken expansion. There are There's one thing I really enjoy. There's a couple of things that I'm like, yeah, okay, it's all right. I could do live with them or not. I'll probably just play with them. And there's one thing I really don't like uh, in this new expansion. So we'll start with the positive. The thing I really like in this expansion is the nebulous and the entire idea of manipulating that together with the smugglers, uh, the, the new lords faction that you can put into the lords deck. I really enjoy that. The, it doesn't add too much complexity to the game. It's a little bit clunky to throw in. I wouldn't necessarily use it with new players, but then afterwards, just throw it in. I mean, it's no big deal at all this whole idea of really powerful cards that you can use but then you have to take this nebulous and you have to keep track of who has it and you know how much are you ahead and uh how much can you possibly get rid of and then tr- that makes the smugglers very very appealing to take uh, and they have keys as well so it's worth taking them anyways and they're fairly cheap at least some of them but being able to be like okay i've got uh, i don't have to worry about loading up with a bunch of kraken cards now not potentially using them because i have this smuggler that's not gonna uh, let that count for me and you know i took a nebulous but now i'm gonna take this one and give you one instead said and it's like this race to see who has the most and still knowing that even if you don't have the most you're still losing points anyways but it might be worth it for you so i really enjoyed that i think that i like the new metal pearls that come with it the kraken miniature is okay um i'm completely unnecessary but uh, still okay worth having it looks cool gives another aesthetic uh another layer of aesthetic appeal to the game so i enjoy the whole nebulous thing and the new smugglers faction i think that's the best part of this expansion the two things that i'm just like okay sure great i'll have them are the other new lords which are the two for each faction which again it's really annoying that they didn't put uh some sort of symbol indicating they're from the expansion so i could tell them apart because i can't remember every lord from the original game nevertheless the ones that i do recall that i know are from this new expansion are really cool especially the uh one of the jellyfish lords i showed that lets you buy two allies as long as you have them. I love dramatic effects like that, which of course the purple faction is known for. So I like that there's at least a little bit more variety in the existing Lords factions. And I really like the Sentinel guys because uh, I mean, they're not game changing. I could give or leave them, I guess, but it's interesting that now you have a way to lock down cards where there was nothing like that before and sometimes you're just like you have to make that impossible choice of i can take either one of these but if i take this one that one's gone now you have the special ability that lets you lock one down and that is really interesting i don't know how much it's going to propel you towards winning the game so that's why i'm saying like i like it a lot but i could play with or without it but it's cool that it's there and because it gives you a nebulous it's not that modular you either play with you can choose to not play with them but you if you do play with them you have to play with the nebula so i almost think they should have locked that off um make them more expensive rather than make you have to take a nebulous for getting them because i'm not even sure i guess they're technically part of the smugglers faction i don't even know thematically how that's supposed to work but i like them i'm, I'm glad that they're there if you're going to play with the nebulous at all uh, now, the part of the game, of the expansion, I don't like are the new uh, tiles, the new location tiles, the sanctuaries, and the loot deck. I guess it's an interesting idea on paper, but it's so drastically different than the rest of the game. It sticks out like a sore thumb. It's very clunky. It's a whole other set of rules, and I don't think it adds enough to the game. I really don't. It's like, oh, it's like, oh, look at this. I get some cool things and then I get some cool things. Oh, I've paired up and now I'm done. It's like you're playing a game of pairs, the game, <laughs> in the middle of this, sort of. And I just don't think it adds enough to it. I think it's another clunky thing that you need to explain. Definitely would never play it with new players. And personally, I might give people the option. I'll explain to people what it does and say, hey, if you want to play with this, we'll play with this. But even if we do, I'm never taking those tiles because you have to figure how well are you really going to do with it? You, if you get extremely lucky and get like a seven and now I've drawn a six and you know then it's going to be worth it for you but the average point spread for the other location tiles assuming you get one that's at least useful to you in some way is what 10 to 12 points something like that I would take that any day of the week and, and the potential for more over pushing my luck like that and getting a few other rewards so and for all of that trouble you don't get a lot of that much so i would not play with it that's the one thing i and it's a major part of the expansion 
I just don't like. Uh, but the other parts of the expansion, I do like, and especially the idea of the Nebula. So, I don't think this is a necessary expansion for Abyss, but I do think if you love Abyss, if you play it a lot and you're looking for a little more variety, for sure you want to get this. And maybe you'll, maybe your mileage might vary on the uh, Sanctuary tiles uh, and the, the loot deck more than mine. Uh, you might get more use out of it than I did. I just don't personally like that. But I'm pretty sure most people are going to like the Nebulous element. At least I can vouch for that. So that is the Kraken expansion for Abyss. A somewhat mixed bag, but overall I recommend it. And I still love Abyss. This definitely proves and reminds me of that. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.